What's up? I'm U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Dylan Heiliger, here at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, home of the Airborne and Special Operations Forces. I'm originally from Hillsdale, New Jersey. I'm a member of the American Legion. I went to Meadowbrook Elementary School, George White Middle School, and Pasquick Valley High School. I've been getting letters and care packages from you guys for about a decade. Ten years you guys have been sending me packages. Um, I just now finally wanted to take an opportunity and a chance to make this little video shout out to show you guys, tell you guys how much I love you all. I appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate your support. And I know all the other members of the uh, community that are in the different military branches. I know they really appreciate it, um, especially deployed. I was in Iraq. I was getting packages from you guys. Uh, we had, uh, my unit had a hard time in Iraq. We saw a lot of fighting and altogether I've lost 11 friends in war. Getting letters and packages from the schools and community really helps remind us what we're fighting for and what we have to look forward to when we get home. It really has an effect on those guys, especially that are deployed, to know that there's people out there thinking of them, praying for them. Um, so, I thank you all. I appreciate it. Here's a little video that I put together. This is my job for the Army. I'm actually a broadcaster now, uh, so I create features, news stories. So here's a little video I made about the history of one of our units, um, Airborne, all the way. Let's go. The same revolutionary belief for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. We dare not forget today that we are the heirs of that first revolution. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights. This is the 82nd Airborne Division, fearless among fighting units. Today we're conducting an airborne operation within the 2nd Brigade Combat Team with the new T-11 parachute. We're doing a mass attack 
with 308 paratroopers on six C-130s on Sicily drop zone. Um, our battalion FRG wanted to invite all the families out today um, so that we could support our husbands and friends and family members um, on the new parachute um, jump for the first time. This airborne operation is important so we can gain confidence with our paratroopers on their new equipment and to increase our uh, decisive action capabilities on a drop zone so we can mass paratroopers in a short battle space in a quick and timely manner and negate dominance on the battlefield. I have a lot of confidence that they know what they're doing. Um, hearing them talk about it all the time, you know they, they work hard and they study hard and they, they prepare as much as they can. So I have confidence that they know what they're doing and how to land safely. Um, I had seen pictures, but it was really awesome. It was pretty epic in person, so I loved it. Black Go Falcons. Black Falcons! Three, two, one, go! Um, today we had our family, uh, our GI spouse day. Because <laughs> of course, not every spouse is a female. We have some husbands that are spouses, either they're dual military or they actually are supporting their, um, their wife in, um, in this career that they've chosen. We try to focus on family first and them getting to know us. But when we bring them in together, they know that we're actually part of a family and it's very, really, you know, one, one fight for all of us. We're the worst ops. And we're for uh, GI Spouse Day with Fall 7th Brigade Support Battalion. It's where the uh, spouses get to come to work and uh, see how it is to be a soldier for the day. You said what? See, everything, everybody doesn't operate the same way and being there's a vision that used to be at home with children, things of that nature. Three, two, one, two, three! Is she being too hard on you guys? No, not yet. 20, 21, The equipment is extremely heavy and very uncomfortable. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to yes. be. <laughs> but it's fun. It's great to see so many wives out here. A whole new appreciation for when it comes to muddy. Yes. It really was unavoidable. Yes. That's mine. The low crawl was good. The main thing that I was looking forward to was the end and jumping off the 34 foot tower. I thought it didn't look very high, but I guess when you get up here, it's a big difference. Oh my God. He gets a steak tonight. Because <laughs> I can't do this stuff. No, no. I love him 10 times more. We had encouragement, though. I think with our husbands being there throughout the day, the encouragement and the motivation, I think, pushes us. And I think that's why a lot of when you have your battle buddies, you need that encouragement and that push to just keep going. And I think that's with him being there, it made me feel comfortable. It's, it's family, you know, so you, you have some of them come with that, get here with the attitude and like, yes, the army is always pushing family first, family first, but we don't see it. For them to actually see it um, and, you know, go through the motions with their spouse and they see, hey, our chain of command is actually there for us, no matter what, our, their, their best interests are in our hearts and minds as far as their families and them. 
so <laughs> glad it's over. How do you feel about the fact that this is what your husband does for a living? I don't think I like it very much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it's exciting. <laughs> Oh, we're from Charlie Company 407 BSB. We're a medical unit. We usually set up a level two aid station. In this situation, though, they're trying to take our guys out of the comfort zone and try to put them into a city like an urban tactical environment. We're at Range 68 on Fort Bragg. It's an urban range, about one square block of buildings. Um, and what we're here to do is we're here to train um, our medics on how they respond to casualty scenarios in this urban setting. The idea being like one of the line platoons such as White Falcons in this example has a CCP that's overrun. They need other medics to come help them but they're still in the activity in the area. Our guys are in the streets, they're in the fighting for this one. Um, we started out, you know, we started out rough. And you're choking him! You just you killed the casualty! He's dead. He's dead! You just killed him! But they, they improved a lot. They've improved both in their tactical skills, their ability to shoot, move, and communicate. Keep clear. Keep on. Move, move! Roger! And then also in their medical skills, you know, how they go through their sequence of events. Take my scalpel. Take your hand. Make it one inch incision. It just keeps them in the moment and keeps them able to save lives. Being put into a place that we've never been before, especially with buildings that we don't know and aren't familiar with. Um, it gives us a better idea of what we can encounter in another country. We were taking fire. There was huge open windows. The biggest problem was like trying to get security, balanced security with actual medical treatments. We're trying to get medics on, people that actually do hands-on and do good tactical field care, care under fire. We don't have time to do an IV. We'll have to do it when we get there. Get them packaged up. Um, we're also integrating UTM, which is a paint type round that we fire out of our rifles. It takes the training value way up and that when you get hit with that it hurts. You know that you got hit and you know that what you're doing isn't appropriate and you have to change positions and you know do it a different way. You know, right now they work at the Roll 2 treatment facility, but one day they might go down to the line units and they're gonna be doing this a lot more. So it's a really good for especially the young guys coming out of AIT, they actually get to see that tactical medicine, that field medicine. It really just enhances our skill set gives our guys the base knowledge on how they treat trauma at the point of injury level and whatever the incident is that they're responding to, it gives them a broader base to just be more successful. All right, Bird's coming in right now. We've all come together as a team and it's nice. I actually hope that if we do come back on GRF or in the future, we have to do more training like this. When the commander of 82nd Airborne Division's 2nd Brigade Combat Team jumps his unit into a war zone, he needs to be able to see all its moving pieces so he can react and make decisions quickly. The commander's staff and brigade headquarters company are the workforce behind helping him create a clear picture of what's happening on the battlefield. When the commander's team hits the ground, they have only the equipment they're able to carry out of the aircraft until the situation allows for further resources to arrive. A shortfall that's recognized in airborne units is before that added support touches down, the commander's brigade aviation element loses the ability to track aviation support via radar systems. This shelter Humvee is the normal platform for the forward area air defense system which links to the Sentinel radar system and allows the commander's team to see any friendly airborne assets or enemy threats in the skies above the battle space. Now this particular truck is too heavy and way too expensive to drop out of a plane during the initial insertion, so it's usually air landed into the drop zone several hours after the airborne operation. The big problem with that is within the first hour of the jump, the airspace is at its height of activity and is the most vulnerable to multiple problems. Members of 2nd Brigade's aviation element devised a solution. We identified some key items that we needed in order to pull out the vehicle and make it mobile, and then we uh, put them inside of a rucksack and jumped them. Once we jump them, we can lay out the computer, set up the satellite, and be receiving an air picture. So in 30 minutes of us hitting the ground, we are already seeing everything is above us. The other brigades within the division are beginning to train with the converted system 
and the change could better airborne units army-wide. Using the same systems we have, the same equipment that we've purchased, the same contracting we already did, we're saving millions of dollars without having to retrofit all these uh, shelters to do a different communications. So we have the equipment, we're just using it in a different manner than it was actually intended to. From Fort Bragg, North Carolina, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Dylan Heiliger. Artillery paratroopers recognize that driving to the battlefield can sometimes be too slow. That's why they're airborne. Flying is faster. 82nd Airborne Division's 2nd Brigade Combat Team recently spent time training to sling load their equipment to Chinook helicopters in order to rig and move what's referred to as a tandem load. It gives you the maneuverability to have the towed capabilities uh, after an air assault operation so we'd be able to bring minimum equipment and then be able to move lightly on the ground. After an advance party flies in on Blackhawks and secures the forward area, they radio back and let the gun crews know it's safe to hook up and move in. Once the howitzers hit the ground, it's a race against the clock for the Black Falcons to get the guns in place and ready to receive fire missions. With the cannons set to put rounds on target, the crew now conducts a dry fire exercise. Hey, Quadrant, tree, seven, nine. Hey, two rounds at my command. The training further maintains a constant state of readiness while the brigade continues to stand firm as America's global response force. From Fort Bragg, North Carolina, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Dylan Heiliger. We're here to pay tribute and honor to Specialist Hickman. Who, uh, this ceremony here is to dedicate the western side of the municipal building here in Guilford County to uh, his name. So. The naming of this plaza and the placing of a memorial monument in honor of our own who made the ultimate sacrifice for all of us has been a very humbling experience. Specialist David E. Hickman. He was the last known casualty of the Iraq War. We were teammates all through Iraq, and uh, he's a real good friend to me. He actually he actually taught me a lot once I got here today. Second. And then we went, we came back to uh, 82nd Airborne. We ended up going to the same company, uh, same squad, same team. I've known him for a while, he was a good kid. This ceremony I mean a lot to me, and it, it's a great honor to be here and, and, and honor Hickman. He was a great guy. Not only was a friend, but he was like a brother to us. So uh, I know he would be happy to see everybody together, to see his family here, and, and to know that this was done for him. I mean, I miss him. I miss him every day, and you know, you always get that feeling like you wish you could say one more thing to him. But he was a, he was a great person, and uh, a God-fearing man. Although he's gone, he still lives on. And this, this ceremony is just, just another thing, another token to help, help him live and never be forgotten.
I'm a platoon leader for 3rd Platoon, Charlie Company, 2325. For the last month or so, we've been sending our guys to breaches courses. Um, and during the last couple weeks, we conducted team and squad live fire exercises. We incorporated flex linear breaches, water impulse breaches, shotgun breaches, mechanical breaches, throughout different scenarios. During this platoon live fire, we incorporated that with everything as well. We began from, from the wood line, um, letting our team leaders maneuver their guys through the wood. Crossing the phase line, we were using echelons of fire between indirect fire 120s, 105s, 81s, and 60s, as well as Kiowas and Apaches. So after we did our echelons of fire and we are now on the objective, the squad leaders had to conduct a uh, razor breach on a on C wire. They had to conduct a water impulse breach on a steel door. Once we secured the compound, we started moving into setting up a defensive posture, setting up um, an engagement area, and waiting for reinforcements to arrive. I think we did very well, especially as a young team. Uh, there are a lot of new leaders, new guys in this platoon, and very pleased with where we are. This was our first time as a platoon together in the field and conducting any live fire exercise, and it uh, turned out very well. Was it scary? Yeah. <laughs> Was it too scary? Uh, today we're celebrating Molly Pitcher Day and the Best of the Best Competition Awards Ceremony. Uh, it's an effort to get our families out and so they can understand what our soldiers do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now firing are the M119 Alpha 2 Howitzers of the 82nd Airborne Division. Well, the competition was completed yesterday after the 20K Ruck March, and then we uh, came here for the ceremony where we could show a display for all the people during Molly Pitcher Day, kind of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We got a chance to show them all the artillery assets that we have out here, and some fun events like jumping houses for the children and good food and stuff like that. Molly Pitcher Day is, is an annual event here at Fort Bragg. Every artillery unit in the 82nd Airborne Division participates in uh, Molly Pitcher Day because it's celebrating the tradition of artillery. This is my first Molly Pitcher event here at Fort Bragg. Um, it's actually nice because I actually get to come out and actually meet the people in our, our family readiness group, which is our FRG. And we get to let your hair down and, and get to know what your husband or your soldier actually does when they come to work. I, I like to shoot. <laughs> the, 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 the 240s and stuff. It hurt a lot worse than I thought it was going to be for fun. It's always good to spend time with your family. Um, but at the same time, being able to show your loved ones what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, because sometimes it's difficult to explain. They can come out here and actually get eyes on what we actually do, and that's, that's really enjoyable for the family and, and the soldiers themselves. It was definitely an experience. Um, a, a wife over just a moment, a moment ago said that, so this is what you go to work to do every day. And that's, that's exciting to hear, because we think when our green suitor goes to work, what do they do? They're, they're soldiers. The, now we actually get to see the machinery that they work with as well as meet some of the other people that are on the same team as them. So I think the families are really going to enjoy it and be a little bit more active with the unit because now they actually see all the moving pieces that go along with it. When you get a chance like this and observe Molly Pitcher Day to bring the families, the children, uh, even to include the pets. You know, it's always a good time uh, to bring them, everyone together, and just see uh, what we do uh, in artillery and in the United States Army. 